Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly and this video is brought to you by my brand new course Reactive Programming in iOS using Combine Framework. If you wanted to learn Combine then this is the best course available. I just published this course a couple of days ago. I already have close to 100 students. This is 5 plus hour course and this is going to introduce you to the Combine Framework. We're going to cover publishers, subscriber operators. You can see all the content we're going to cover. I'm also going to give you examples in Swift UI as well as UIKit. So if you're interested in learning more, check out the link right there in the YouTube description. Now let's go back to the video. Now that we have created the core data provider, which is going to set up the core data stack, our next step is to create and save the to-do item. For that, we're going to jump into our content view. Now, in the content view, you can already see that the interface is pretty much all the Swift UI code that is written is by default. So we haven't really written anything in our Swift UI code. So let's go ahead and start with that. The first thing I want to do is to capture the text, meaning the title of the to-do item. And in order to capture that, I'm going to go ahead and create a state field. So I'll say state private var title string like this. Next, we can go ahead and add a text field with rounded border so we can actually see the text field. So let's remove this code from the vStack and replace it with a text field. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. There we go. Hopefully our Xcode previews are eventually going to catch up, but at least we have a text field over here. When we submit text field, meaning whenever the person writes something in the text field and they perform, uh, they press the return key, then the on submit is going to get fired. Now, inside the on submit, we need to first check that if the text that you're writing in the text field, is it correct or not, meaning you're not leaving it empty. So I'm going to go over here and create is form valid. There we go. Title dot is white space. Now, over here, we don't really have any extension which is called white space. Don't worry about it. Let's go ahead and implement that. I'm just going to go ahead and add a new group, extensions, and we're just going to go ahead and extend string. So I'm just going to mark the extension, string plus extensions. And in the extensions, I'm simply going to add the extension that I'm trying to perform. There we go. All right. Now let's go back to our code. And hopefully now it's going to pick up is empty or white space, so it's not going to complain like that. Let's go ahead and see what's going on with our Xcode previews. Hopefully it's going to be able to load correctly. All right, so here we go. We have our text field. Finally, our Xcode preview is working, took a while. So the first thing we need to do is we need access to our manage object context. Now, if you remember correctly, in the providers, we created the core data provider. And inside the core data provider, we also created for the preview. Now, this particular preview provider is going to be used when we are working for Xcode previews. And we can use in-memory model if we want to. So what in-memory model is going to do is when you save something, it's going to be saved in the memory. So when the Xcode preview is going to launch again, uh, you will not really have that data. So all that data will be gone. Now, if you want to use a real persistent storage, that's fine too. Uh, but for over here, I just want to show you that how you can even use the different kind of a model. All right. So in this case, we have the content view. And on the content view, we can add environment. 
And one of the environment key path values is the manage object context. For the manage object context, we do have to provide the view context or the manage object context, which we can get from core data provider dot preview dot view context. So this particular context that we are providing is only for the preview. Now inside our content view, if we want to access that manage object context, then we can get it from the environment. So we're gonna say environment, manage object context, private, var, and then the context. So this is going to give us the context from the environment value manage object context. So we will have access to the context, all right? The next thing we want to do is we want to save, right? So let's go over here to our submit button. And first we can check if is form valid. If the form is valid, then I'll say save to do item. Now keep in mind that first of all, we don't really have save to do item. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that we're just gonna implement the save to do item inside the view itself. Eventually in the much bigger app, I'm gonna show you that how you can move all this logic into your core data models so that you can also test it out and reuse that functionality. So let me go ahead and create save to do item. So if you're building much larger applications, probably this approach will not be good. And the reason is that if you have any logic, like domain logic that you want to execute, then I would not put the domain logic over here because it will be very hard to test it out and it will be very hard to reuse it, all right? Now, if you're building a simple app like to-do list that we're doing, it's perfectly fine. I mean, it's just a demo project so that it will keep you, you know, keep you going with core data. So save to-do item, the first thing we're gonna do is create an instance of the to-do item, to-do item, and you can see that the to-do item we can pass in the context, which we already have. So the context is, we got it from the environment and we can pass that context to the to-do item to create a to-do item. Next, I can go ahead and say to-do item dot title equals to the title. So this title is the one that whenever you type something in the text field, that's the one that we are using and that's the one that we are assigning to the to-do item. And the, finally, we have to save the context, context.save. And context.save, when you call that, it is a throwable function. So we have to make sure that we are wrapping it with try catch. So let's go ahead and wrap this. And whenever the error comes, we're just gonna print the error on the console and nothing more. So this is our save to do item, nice and simple. Once again, and I have to repeat it again and again, but this, all of this stuff like saving, updating, even fetching, and even business logic in the later tutorials, in the later lectures, I'll show you a different way of doing that. But since this is kind of like the start of the course, I just want to show you that how you can quickly create a to-do list application where you are writing these functions in the view itself, which is perfectly fine. And remember that in the uh, Swift UI framework, the view itself is the view model. So we're not really be creating any view models to accommodate anything. Uh, if you create view model, that's just extra work for no good. And I've, uh, I've, I'll have some articles that you can read, but uh, you already have probably read those articles uh, and we are not going to be using any view models per se to create our applications, all right? Okay, so we have that, that is working correctly, that's fine. Now let's go ahead and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a spacer over here so everything is kind of like pushed up. There we go. Uh, in the view, in the Xcode preview, it's gonna move up. And I'm also going to add a navigation stack. Although we're not really performing any navigation, I'm just gonna add a navigation stack so that I can get that toolbar working, all right? So once we have this, uh, after the padding, I can go ahead and say navigation title and whatever navigation title that you want, I'm just gonna add uh, to do, but you can use anything you want. You can see the export preview is kind of slow right now, but hopefully it's gonna catch up. 
So here we go. We have our to-do item that is fine. And so this part is important because over here we are injecting it for working with Xcode previews. But when you're actually running your app on the device or the simulator, then this code gets fired. This is in the app file itself, right? So we have to make sure that we are adding or injecting the environment values over here also. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a provider which is a core data provider. There we go. Now, since I'm not really passing anything in core data provider, this means that this will create uh, the persistent storage, meaning it's not going to store in the memory. You can see, you can see that it does allow me to pass in in memory, but in memory is false by default. So we're not really going to be putting it in memory. We're just going to be saving it in the actual database. Next, I can go ahead and put environment object or environment itself, sorry, not the environment object, but the environment value for the manage object context. And we can say provider dot view context. So that is great. And we will go ahead and also wrap this with a navigation stack. So we have access to that toolbar navigation bar on the top, even though we're not really performing any navigation. Okay, so this is great. Um, what next we want to do is even if we save right now, I mean, I can type anything over here. Let's see, sometimes it doesn't allow you to type anything. You can see, uh, and you can fix that. Sometimes you can fix that by just changing the simulator or uh, sometimes it just doesn't work. Uh, Xcode previews, you know, see, now I can type it over here. So let's say if I say clean, oh, I still cannot type anything over here. So that's kind of that's kind of bad, right? And hopefully we'll fix that. Not that one. Let's see. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, now I can type it over there. Kind of funny. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay, clean car. Now, even if I press enter over here, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, we will have to fix that part. The another part that we need to do is after saving it, after this operation, we can probably go ahead and set the title to empty string so that the title is gone. All right, so again, if I go and I type something over here, it's still it's loading. You can see Xcode previews are just getting slower and slower. But if we type something over here in, the, in this list, let's say clean car, now it disappears when I press enter after saving it, okay? So the next thing that we want to do is we want to fetch the data and we also want to display the data. And keep in mind that when we are using Xcode previews, we may actually see some default data printed out. So all of this default data will be printed out for you. All right, so we will have 10 items saying to do item one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine, 10. So don't get scared with that. Just remember this is only for the preview, not for your actual application. Okay, so let's go to the next lecture and find out how we can perform fetching of the data.